When I was in Maryland many years ago, I found a tiny dead crab on the beach, and a woman glued it to the bottom of this plastic container so that I could take it home. The container was not airtight, but the crab was dry, so I assumed it would survive forever. The case has a tiny hole that a half millimeter diameter pencil lead can fit through, but I didn't think any insects could fit through that hole. Years later, I opened up the case and noticed that the crab was full of holes, and the eyes were missing. The case was also full of tiny particles that I assumed were pieces of the crab and insect waste products. I didn't find any living or dead insects inside, although there might have been some dead insects somewhere inside the crab body. It looks as if the insects got into the case, ate the crab, and then got out of the case. However, there were some objects that looked like the molted skin of an insect that didn't have any wings. They were much larger than the hole in the plastic case. Each had an opening in the back where the insect crawled out. Here is one next to a half millimeter diameter pencil lead, which is about the size of the hole in the container. I sometimes find some hairy bugs crawling around my house that have a resemblance to those empty shells. But could such a large bug get inside the plastic container and then crawl back out? After watching baby cockroaches slip through unbelievably tiny cracks, perhaps these creatures can squeeze through tiny holes also. What is this bug? The internet needs photo recognition software so that we can search on photos and figure out what these creatures are. Recently, I sanitized some insects with isopropyl alcohol, and after they dried, I put them in this container which I assumed was insect proof. But when I opened it up, I found that there were bugs inside. Maybe I didn't let them soak long enough in alcohol, or maybe the insects got on them after they dried, or maybe some eggs can survive small amounts of alcohol. I can't imagine how they could have crawled into this container. They were all a particular type of bug that doesn't have wings and reminds me of termites. It looks like some tiny eggs have been hidden in corners and crevices on the yellow jacket's legs. I assume these eggs are coated with a sticky substance. Are the creatures that are crawling around also laying these eggs? Or are they only hatching from the eggs? In which case, what is laying the eggs? I decided to look closely at that bowl that I was keeping the silverfish in. I never bothered to cover the bowl, so it was exposed to whatever insects are living inside my house. From a distance, I only saw silverfish, but when I pushed aside the oats and looked underneath, I found lots of tiny creatures hiding in the shadows. They were the same creatures that were crawling around on the yellow jacket. When they are young, they are almost clear, and then they become pink, and eventually brown. I don't know what they are. They seem to prefer a diet of dead insects, but they also eat grains. This one is eating a dead silverfish. Their head is almost square. I dumped some of the small particles out of the bowl and into this plastic container so that the tiny insects couldn't hide anywhere. This made it easier to notice that there were also some tiny flies. They have two wings, each long and narrow, with an almost transparent covering. Most of the wing is actually made of hairs. I drew a red outline around the conventional wing. I suppose the fly is so tiny that the hairs can act like a wing. At that small size, a wing may not need to be solid. 
I assume that these two flies are fighting over territory, but if they are adults and this is their courtship procedure, then their eggs would be too small to see without a microscope. Just how small do flies get? How small is the smallest insect egg? Also, notice that these two flies have translucent, bulbous bodies. The fly I showed earlier didn't have a translucent body. I found dozens of flies in this mixture of junk, and all of the flies had identical wings and legs, but a couple of them did not have translucent bodies. I have no idea why they were different. As I was looking through this mixture of junk in order to find insects, I discovered some oval eggs. There were bits of junk clinging to each of them. Apparently, the eggs are sticky when they are laid, which lets them cling to other insects. Also, by clinging to bits of junk, they become more difficult for predators to see. It's also more difficult for humans to see them. I collected about 20 of them and put them into a small plastic container with a dead insect and a half millimeter diameter pencil lead. I assumed that whatever hatched might want to eat the dead insect and the pencil lead would give an indication of how small they were. Some eggs were clinging to large particles, but these were clinging to tiny bits of junk. To give you an idea of how small they are, I put one on this euro coin near the letter R. Another way to give you an idea of their size is to put two eggs next to grains of sugar. There are different sizes of sugar grains, but even the smallest is larger than the eggs. Several eggs could fit inside the typical sugar grain. Or, if you prefer comparing the eggs to grains of salt, which are more uniform in size, you can see that they are smaller than the smallest grains of salt. If you would like to compare them to the pollen from the fir tree in my front yard, you can see that they are larger than pollen grains. During the next few days, most of the eggs began turning black and then they began to hatch. It was one of those tiny flies. Unlike the caterpillars in my other video, which had to spend quite a bit of time chewing open their eggshell, these eggshells seemed to crumble open. It didn't appear as if the fly had to chew a hole through the eggshell. The fly that came out of these eggs were the same size as the two flies that I saw chasing one another around. So I assume that those other two were also newly hatched flies, rather than adults who were mating. But since these are babies, what do they grow up to become? My attempts to save dead crabs and other insects has taught me that it is virtually impossible to keep any organic material preserved without the use of chemicals or vacuum chambers. Every time I tried to save something, like a dead butterfly, in what I assumed was a bug-proof container, I would discover that something had gotten inside of it and eaten it. I can understand why people centuries ago believed in spontaneous creation. Without magnifying glasses or microscopes, they never would have noticed that there are tiny eggs and tiny insects everywhere. In addition, there are microscopic organisms everywhere, such as bacteria, yeast, and fungus. Since these flies were in an open container, they eventually flew away, but I never noticed them anywhere in the house. They are so tiny that I doubt if we would see them except under certain lighting conditions. I suppose we would mistake them for dust particles that are floating through the air. The wind must blow them all around, so maybe they're living in other areas also. I wouldn't be surprised if we are regularly inhaling these and eating them without realizing it. 
Next time you look at a grain of salt, imagine that there is a fly so tiny that it can sit on top of that grain. Not all of the eggs turned black and hatched into flies. There were a couple that remained white. They hatched into that more common crawling creature. These creatures seem to be slightly moist when they hatch, which causes them to get stuck on the smooth plastic. Here is one next to that half millimeter diameter pencil lead. It grew quickly. Three days later it was noticeably larger. The only shadow in this container was by the pencil lead, so it would spend a lot of time near it. I put it on the Euro coin. The flies, however, did not grow as much. I put some in a sealed container, but they died within a few days. I guess I didn't give them the proper food, or maybe they needed water. They have interesting antenna. As they crawl around the tiny bits of junk, they use their antenna to touch everything, and sometimes to push small objects. Their antenna are more than just sensory organs. They have enough strength to push objects. Their normal standing posture is with their head up in the air. This one has slightly different antenna. Finally, here is another view of their wings. They look more like furry decorations. Most of the surface area of their wings seems to be hair.